it is news time again on Vicky Voice TV where you get all those news that matter to us. Sure, we have come again with another news. And you know this our brother, Joseph Okechuko, is trying to give us details of what is going on in Niger and how it consign us as a race. Alright? Not only him, there's another white man that's actually supporting this Niger. And it's giving us detail of what the Western world is trying to do and what made Niger to say, hell no, they cannot achieve it. Today is when you will understand it so that you'll be able to tell the real stories. Thank you. Let's hear them. I decided to see if I could do my little best to equip us a little bit with some knowledge and some understanding of what is really happening in that region because I feel like it is time for those who know how to pray to begin to pray. But I also feel like you wouldn't be able to pray effectively if you don't have a sufficient amount of information on what is really happening so that you don't pray amiss, like we say in Christianity. Okay, so... Ever since this whole thing began to happen, the coup happened in July. I think it was July the 26th. And a new military regime was born in Niger Republic. And the guy who was there, Mohamed Bazoum, was ousted and, you know, kept in his home, house arrest. He's been in detention ever since. And since that time, there has been a whole lot of activities like ECOWAS had given ultimatum that expired last Sunday and said, if you don't restore or cede power to this guy, uh, there could be some type of military intervention. And that didn't happen. Eventually, the ultimatum expired. And rather than cave to ECOWAS' threats and the pressure from international community, the military junta in Niger was even more emboldened by the number of people that showed up at the stadium to give them some love and cheer them up and thank them for delivering the nation from the stranglehold of colonial France. Can you imagine that? So the people are extremely happy with these guys who took over power from Bazoum. Now, if you follow me on Twitter and you have followed some of my posts, you would have noticed that every time we make posts about what really is the bone of contention, we keep talking about uranium because, of course, uh, Niger Republic is one of the biggest suppliers of uranium in the world. Like people are even saying that up to 35 to 40 percent of the uranium supplies that go to Europe come from Niger Republic. They also get uranium from Kazakhstan. It used to be also Russia. They get from Russia as well. In fact, I read a report recently that despite all the sanctions they slammed on Russia, that they did not <laughs> slam Russia with any sanction on uranium export. Because sanctioning Russia on export of uranium means that the whole of the European Union's energy need is going to be scrapped. They are going to be thrown into darkness big time. Yeah. So bad. Even though they did not sanction Russia with respect to uranium export or shipment to Europe, they are making alternative plans to make sure that in the nearest future, they wouldn't have to depend on Russia to get the uranium. And so where are all the other alternatives and plan B's they have? Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan gives them uranium, about 26 point something percent of the uranium supply to Europe is from Kazakhstan. But then the problem is that everything that has to do with the shipment of their uranium from Kazakhstan to Western Europe, it, it goes through Russia. <laughs> so Russia is responsible. So without Russia, even though Kazakhstan has uranium for them, without Russia, they cannot receive the uranium. And now the next plan B they have is Niger Republic. Because this uranium is very powerful. It is using nuclear reactors. That is how they are able to keep their energy alive in Europe. 
Now, Niger Republic is the next one. And can you imagine that a coup has taken place and the coup plotters are loyal to Russia, the same Russia that Europe is trying to run away from. And now they have now cut all supplies of uranium to France and America. Think about that. So we've been emphasizing on this, that this is the major bone of contention. But I want to bring you up to speed on something that I haven't really talked about. And that thing will shock you because if you ask me what is the real, the real, real bone of contention, it is the one that I'm about to talk about right now. Many of you heard about the Nord Stream pipeline underwater explosion. Nord Stream is the major pipeline that moves gas from Russia to Western Europe. Right? And you heard there was a time that it was blown up. That is something that I would say is a major, major, massive dent on Russia's economy. It doesn't mean it crippled Russia, but it was a hit that Russia really felt. And guess what? Every single person, including Russians and many high-profile American politicians, pointed the accusing finger at who? At the United States of America and said it was America that blew it up. The United States of America has not officially taken responsibility for that, but everybody says it's America. Russia is 100% sure that it's America that blew it up. And when that was blown up, America now became the sole supplier, not sole supplier, but a major supplier of gas to Europe. Now, here is where Niger comes in. <clears throat> I want you to listen very carefully. Yeah. Now, that Nord Stream has been blown up because Europe wants to get away from Russian gas. Everything that Russia gives, they want to cut off from it. They want to have alternatives from other places. But here's what's going on. There was an idea that was going around since the 1970s that eventually came to a place of fruition somewhat in 2002. And I'm going to read you this now. There's something called Trans-Saharan Gas Pipeline. <laughs> the Trans-Saharan Gas Pipeline, TSGP, also known as Niger Pipeline, and Trans-African Gas Pipeline is a planned natural gas pipeline from Nigeria to Algeria. It is seen as an opportunity to diversify the European Union's gas supply, not France's gas supply, not Spain's gas supply, but European Union's gas supply. Now, what it means is that if this Trans-Saharan Gas Pipeline actually goes through that Europe does not need Russian gas anymore. So this idea of the Trans-Saharan Pipeline was first proposed in the 1970s. On 14 January 2002, the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, and Algerian National Oil and Gas Company, Sonatrack, signed the Memorandum of Understanding for Preparations of the project so that it will begin. Then in June 2005, NNPC and Sonatrack of Algeria signed a contract with Penspen Limited for a feasibility study of the project. The feasibility study was completed in September 2006 and they found the pipeline to be technically and economically feasible and reliable. Now, between that time and 2022, so many things happened. The project never quite took off as it should. They started having issues with the issue of uh, terrorism in the Sahel region and all kinds of things. And so it was stopped. But guess what? I want you to pay attention to this timeline. On the 28th of July, 2022, 2022, the Algerian, Nigerian, and Nigerian ministers of energy now signed a memorandum of understanding, MOU, 
for the implementation of the Trans-Saharan Gas Pipeline TSGP project, co-signed by Algerian Minister of Energy and Mines, Mohamed Akbab, Nigerian Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Timi Presilva, and Nigerian Minister of Energy and Renewable Energy, Mohamed Sani Mohamadou, at the end of the work of the third tripartite ministerial meeting held in Algiers. So look at the timeline. They left this project way back. Remember when this thing was almost in the news every time? When we were always talking about that they want to move a pipeline from Nigeria and send gas to Europe. They left it, abandoned it. All of a sudden, right after the Russia-Ukraine war started and, and Europe began to cut off from Russia, separate from Russia, cut off everything that Russia used to give to them. They are trying to win themselves of all kinds of Russian supplies, energy, and the rest of them. Just right then, we see them coming back and saying, okay, why don't we just restart this project? And the project costs 13 billion with a B, billion US dollars. Let's get started with that project because the moment the project succeeds, we will not have any need for Russian gas anymore. The Nord Stream can stay that way and never get repaired. And we wouldn't even care. Nigerian minister and government were behind this. They supported it. Nigeria, of course, is where the gas is coming from. It's going to come from a few other countries, but Nigeria is the main supplier of this gas. Let me read you the route of the gas that is supposed to go through the Trans-Saharan Pipeline. The pipeline will start in the Wari region in Nigeria. Wari? <laughs> Wari region in Nigeria and run north through Niger to Hasi Armel in Algeria. In Hasi Armel, the pipeline will connect to the existing Trans-Mediterranean, Maghreb Europe, Medgez and Galsi pipelines. These supply Europe from the gas transmission hubs at El Kala and Benisaf on Algeria's Mediterranean coast. The length of the pipeline will be 4,128 kilometers, which is 2,565 miles. 1,037 kilometers, 644 miles in Nigeria, 841 kilometers in Niger, and 2,310 kilometers in Algeria. The pipeline is starting from Wari to carry gas to Europe from worry to move gas to Europe and when these guys Niger coup plotters took over power they said we're not a part of this we don't have anything to do with this one and they stopped it they cancelled it now let me take you back to what I've said before about the battle between Russia and Europe which is happening in Ukraine, which is happening in Sudan, which they are now about to ignite in Niger. Because if you notice, loyalties are now going in two directions. It's either you're loyal to colonial Europe, the West, or you're loyal to Russia. Can you see that? That means that we are now beginning to smell what it feels like to have or live in a multipolar world. Because all our lives we have always lived in a unipolar world. And I promised I was going to make a video to break it down and explain this whole unipolar, multipolar dichotomy, right? And I'm going to do that. But this is what it feels like. Because now you are left with a choice. Unlike when we were left with no choice at all. You can now say, if I don't want to go with colonial France or America or Europe as a whole, I can go with Russia who is also a superpower. That's what is happening in Niger. So Russia still bearing the grudge that you blew up our ultra expensive Nord Stream pipeline so that you don't have access to our gas and so that you can also pauperize us. And you are now gloating over the fact that you have Africa. You can take cheap gas from Africa and pipe it all the way to Algeria from where the gas now connects to all manner of pipelines that go through Morocco to Spain and the one that goes through this other one to Italy. In fact, the moment it gets to that gas hub in Algeria, Hasi Armel 
Once he gets there, the thing goes straight to Europe. It's not just Spain and Italy, to the rest of Europe. And they wouldn't need anything from Russia anymore in terms of gas. So now people who are loyal to Russia are on ground to say, you know what? Mm -mm -mm -mm. This gas thing is not going through us. And that pipeline must have to go through Niger before it gets to its final destination. So Europe is stuck. So when you look at what is happening in Niger, it is not just France involved. It is the whole of Europe that is involved. So that when you pray, you know the extent of your prayer. So that you can understand why there is so much pressure on ECOWAS to act. So you can understand why there is so much pressure on France to also act. Because they also have soldiers on ground in that place. And now you can understand why this is a make or break for Niger or Nigerian coup plotters or the new administration in Niger. Because this is why they brought in who? Wagner PMC fighters. It is no longer news. It's not even fake news. It's not even rumor. Wagner PMC fighters are on the ground in Niger Republic right now. And you know as much as I do <laughs> that Wagner PMC, they don't play. They don't joke. I don't want to talk too much. I just wanted to give you an idea of all the bones of contention in this whole Nigerian situation, which is why many of you may see a lot of stubbornness on both sides, which means that potentially we are headed towards a Ukraine type situation on the West African coast. You can imagine what this means for Nigeria, what this means for Ghana, what this means for all the nations that are within the sub-region. Because when this thing happens, it is not going to be for Niger alone. Mali and Burkina Faso and Guinea have already said they are going to join their brothers in Niger to fight. Ojure has also cried out loud and said, let this not happen. We must be consulted because we share like a thousand mile border with Niger. So many other people, Egypt has also said, let this not happen. But do you think anyone is listening? The stuff that is at stake is huge. It's almost like a make or break. As I've told you, if they don't fight, what are they going to do with energy? Because Russia has already cut off. They have already blown up the pipeline. So they're not getting it. Uranium, they are deficient. You talk about gas, they are deficient. How do you want them? The only feasible way that is understandable to them through which they can actually replace Russian gas supply is through this pipeline that is going to move gas for them from Wari, Nigeria. When they have their people there, nobody can stop that from flowing. So for you to now stop the movement in Niger, you're going to have to face them. That's why this war is looming so hard. There are too many interests involved. There are too many things that are connected to this. And it's not going to be an easy war. It's not going to be like Sudan. It's not even going to be like Ukraine. This is going to be far worse than all the other two wars they are fighting. And this is why we pray and hoping that the voice of reason will probably step in on this guy, down on these guys. And somebody will just sit down and listen and say, hey, maybe we need to go the diplomatic route all the way and leave this whole military action. Because at the end of the day, it's still going to be the West sitting by and watching while African brothers fight fellow African brothers and we kill each other to impress rather than sit down around the table to discuss as we are known to do. But first, a story that no one's talking about is the massive pipeline that is nearly set to go online. Now, it starts in Nigeria. It flows through Niger on its way up into Europe. Chevron and the United States have already invested $13 billion into this pipeline. And guess what, guys? 
after the Nord Stream pipeline destruction, Chevron stepped up production to get this up and running. Hey, we'll speed, you know, we'll speed this up. We'll fast track this. And now the people of Niger are saying, wait a second. Why are we going to allow a pipeline to flow right through our country so Europe can have natural gas? You are doing nothing for us. You continue to steal from us. Sorry, no more pipeline. This is why Europe is terrified this morning. The United States already blew up the Nord Stream pipeline, put their own pipeline into action in Africa. It's a smart business move, right? Well, we'll just blow up the competition. Imagine Walmart doing that to Target stores. Yeah, we're just going to blow up those stores. Now you got to shop at Walmart, and now Niger is saying, hey, sorry, you're not going to use our country to transport your natural gas into Europe. Get out of here. So Europe is facing catastrophe with no Nord Stream pipeline coming from Russia any longer, and now the threat of this pipeline being shut down through Africa. This was their salvation, this pipeline. And then add into it uranium and Europe's nuclear power. The United States gets over 50% of its uranium from Russia despite all of the sanctions that the United States has placed against Russia. They left uranium off the list. I love this. I love that they chose to sanction every other thing, but they left uranium off the list because we need it so badly. We need it desperately. Why? The United States is so heavily dependent on Russia for uranium that Putin could literally flip a switch, literally destroy the American economy by turning off the lights. A major backup resource of uranium is Niger. The French, the United States, have been essentially stealing uranium from African countries for decades. And again, these countries are saying enough is enough. We are sovereign countries. Get out of here. We are going to keep our own minerals and make our own decisions. And Russia is giving them that option right now. We want you to keep your sovereignty. We want you to be an independent country, not a slave to the West. Listen to Africa Bureau Chief Musa Ibrahim explain how the people of Africa want to gain back their wealth, their minerals, stop giving it away to America and Europe. What people want is to gain back their wealth, the, back their uranium, their gold, their iron, their uh, phosphate, their oil, their gas. And this scares the West because this means the true democracy will take place in Africa when people actually own their own land and the wealth of Africa does not go untaxed, unsupervised from the mines in Niger to the banks uh, of Paris and the financial sector in Britain. And he's right. Niger's coup isn't happening in a vacuum. This isn't a singular event. They're now pushing back against this neocolonialism in a larger multipolar world, saying, this unipolar order that America has ruled for many, many years, seeking to keep your boot on the people of Africa, is not going to stand anymore. Africans are seeking to regain their national sovereignty. Africa saying, hey, we are rich in uranium, but we don't get to benefit from any of it because you steal it from us. We will enrich our own uranium and we will sell it to you and you'll pay us for it. No more theft. Africa is in the middle of a revolution right now. That's, take a look at this map just published on Friday. These are all of the African nations that have now signed military agreements with Russia. And even a few of those in white are getting ready to partner with Russia as well. Damn, that's a lot of red. Now, we'll come back to that map in a moment. But first, this weekend, we saw dramatic developments. Russian flags raised in the air throughout the continent. First to Niger, the country that started it all. We break down. Russian flags everywhere. And according to France 24 News Service, the government of Niger has now signed a contract with the Russian Wagner Group for security. And they need it because the coup in Niger has entered the point of no return right now. The people rising up against France, against the United States' influence in that country. The Western powers that have controlled Niger for decades are now being pushed out. And this weekend, the military leaders now say that Niger will no longer be a European colony. And they've demanded that all French soldiers get out now, get out of here, or face the consequences. Why does the United States even have troops in this country in the first place? Well, that's a great question. So get out of here, France, and get out of here, United States. You don't belong here. Over the past few days, the United States started dropping massive amounts of military cargo right near the Niger border with its warplanes. But that threat is not stopping the people of Niger. 
tens of thousands of people marching in that country this weekend, celebrating their independence and shouting no to foreign military bases, no to poverty, no to the West stealing their uranium, their phosphate and other minerals. Get out of here now. All of the ambassador's offices to the Niger Republic Mission Service, the United States, France, Nigeria, and Togo have all been terminated. All of their offices are now officially shut down by the Niger government. The head of the military just made this announcement. So other African nations are now showing their support for Niger and starting to say the very same thing. Get out of our country. This weekend, the people in Senegal rising up against Western colonial governments controlling their country. The CIA, MI6, and other Western intelligence services are doing whatever they can right now, spinning their wheels trying to hold on to power in these countries with their puppet governments. The people in West Africa are fiercely anti-American imperialism. So it wasn't a surprise then to see the country of Guinea announce they are supporting Niger as well. La République de Guinée réaffirme par ce communiqué sa vision panafricaniste en apportant sa solidarité à la population nigérienne. This is massive. Colonel Douglas McGregor says the people who've had their minerals stolen for years are saying enough is enough. Get out of my country. The Africans are, are fed up with it. And so this is an example in Niger where a, a supposedly U.S.-backed government with a U.S.-trained military suddenly turned around and said, I think all of you white people need to get out of here. We've had it with you. Go away. Go, Europeans leave. Knowledge, they say, is power. At least we have been educated and uh, we have known what is actually going on. What is going on, you will just be misguided. You see the level of corruption, impunity, <laughs> international in international level the whites are not smiling they really need us to to die like they want us to die and so that they will leave that suppression doesn't want to go down they don't see us as humans they are the only one that have wisdom that have sense huh i should reason like human that's why they want to blow off areas. You see, they want war to come up. Hmm. Well, we need prayers, my dear people. Thank you very much for your time on this page channel. God bless you all.